Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Custom Materials webinar. My name is Nick, and I'll be doing the presentation with you today. Just like all of our previous webinars, everybody will be on mute. So if you do happen to have any questions at any point during our presentation, please feel free to go ahead and type that into the questions area, and I will go do my best to answer those questions for you. Also at the end of the class, I will be sending out an email that will contain a document that covers everything that we're gonna be talking about in today's class. Should you happen to have any questions after our class is over while using this manual, you can contact our support department and they will be happy to help you out with any questions you may have. Again, today's class is on custom materials. And we're essentially going to be going over some information about how to create custom materials that you can use in your projects to apply to different elements or different textures within the file itself. We're going to be looking at how to source materials from the internet. We're also going to be looking at how to edit the materials. And then we're also going to be looking at how to adjust the materials properties once you bring that material into Envisioneer. Now, in my scene that you're seeing on the screen right now, I've just created a basic uh, square house and I've thrown some materials on here for us to take a look at. Uh, but the first thing we're going to be looking at is sourcing the material itself that we want to use in our design. So depending on what you're going to be using the material for, this will help dictate where you can source that file from. If you're looking for a very specific material from a manufacturer, then you can find the image or texture on their website or by searching online for a texture that closely matches what you are trying to replicate. Using a search engine like Google and entering in key phrases like seamless texture uh, will help narrow down the results for you. If you're trying to match an existing finish, you can take a picture of the finish with your camera and then save that image to your computer so that it can be used in editing. When sourcing your textures, you want them to be in either a JPEG or PNG formats, unless you're creating a transparent image. Then they should be saved using the uh, BMP or PNG file format. And I'll go over why that is the case a little later in our class. Once you have found the material you want to use, you're then going to save the material to the textures folder on your computer. Now, depending on how you have your Windows files or Windows folders set up, when you click on File Explorer and you go in and you select the uh, location, we need to go to our C drive and then we need to go to Program Data. Now, on my system, I have a certain folder option turned on. If you go to this location and you do not see Program Data, it is because it is a hidden file. So enable to, to be able to see your hidden files, you need to go up and you need to select under the view option, under options, so we go to the view tab, options. We need to go to the view tab under the folder options and we need to make sure we have show hidden files, folders and drives enabled. This will allow you to see all of the different folders. Once you do this once, it is saved permanently, so you don't need to keep doing this every single time. Uh, all you have to do simply is select Apply and then OK. Underneath Program Data, you will find CADSoft. And under CADSoft, you're going to find Envisioneer 16. And then under Envisioneer 16, you will find your Textures folder. This is where you should be saving all of your textures. It just keeps everything together for you and you know exactly where they are. Saving the textures to your desktop and editing them from there and then moving the files over to here is also fine. It all depends on what your process of uh, working is going to be best for you. So now that we have the location of where we want to save these files to, we're now going to actually go up and we're going to source a file. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to select uh, Google, and I'm going to type in a search result of what I actually want to bring in. So I want to bring in a, uh, let's do a board and batten. We'll do board and batten. Uh, let's do a blue. 
and we'll say seamless. So the more information you type in here, the more narrowed down the search will be, and it will help you um, show exactly what you want. So by doing this seamless texture at the end, it's going to narrow it down to actual textures. If I just did board and batten blue, it would show me houses with board and batten blue. It would show me all kinds of different results. This seamless texture uh, at the end should help narrow it down to actual textures that I would want to use. You can also go in and we can just use from here or we can simply select images and it will now break it down into a uh, board and batten and we can see all the different textures that are available for us. Now, all I'm going to do from here is I'm going to find one that looks pretty good and I'm going to grab, uh, let's just grab this guy right here and I can see that texture. So right now I'm looking at that texture. I'm going to right click on it and I'm just going to go save as. And under the save as option, I'm just going to save this to my desktop. And I'm just going to go and say uh, board and batten, and we're going to go blue. And we're going to keep that as a JPEG. And then we're just going to save that to our desktop. I'm going to minimize this. And now on my desktop, I'm going to find the texture that I just copied. Now, depending on what you have available to you, the next step is going to be editing the material. So when you apply a material in Envisioneer, it copies it across the face of the receiving object. So in our case, we're gonna be applying this to a wall. So it's gonna map this material all the way around our design for every wall that we want it to go to. If the material is smaller than the object, it will continuously repeat the material to fill the space of the object. This can have some undesirable effects if the material has a definitive edge that is repeated across the face of the object, making the material appear fake. Once you have the material saved to your computer, you can start to edit it if needed to remove parts of a material that would make it not repeat correctly. So if you have photo editing software on your computer like Photoshop, you can open it in that application. If not, you can still just use the Microsoft Paint option and it will work just as well. We're essentially just gonna be cropping the picture to make it uh, fit exactly what we want for our design. So for the purposes of today's class, I'm just gonna use Paint to do this. And all I'm going to do is I find the file that I have saved. And right here, we can see that BNB blue that I saved to my desktop. And I'm just going to right click on it. And I'm going to say open with. And I'm going to say paint. I will now see that material in paint. Now, when I say I want this to be a tileable or a seamless texture, What's going to happen here is it's going to take this image, and if I just do a copy here so you can see, oops, undo that, select, and if I just do a copy of this entire piece, and I say copy, and I do a, sorry, and a paste, if I try to bring this over onto the other side, it's going to adjust the, and I'm just going to increase the size of the, uh, image here. So we're going to go 16, let's do 1720 as an example. We'll say okay. So if I do something like this, oh, sorry, delete. I want to do the entire screen. Sorry, I did it for just the image I had selected. So we're going to do 1720 and we're going to do 866, we'll say okay. What it's going to do is it's going to take that texture and it's going to apply it. And if I put that one in here, and if I go and I say paste again, and I try to put these two together, I'm going to get a material that looks something like that. And that's not what I want for this design. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and undo all of that. And I want to make sure that this texture maps correctly. So for in order to do that, I need to crop out some of this. So I want a board 
and then a batten, and then a board, and then a batten, and then a board, and then a batten. I don't want this last board because this last board isn't going to show correctly. Um, it's going to make it look like a double wide board. So to do that, I'm going to crop out a portion of this drawing. Now, if I take a look at the image, I'm trying to find the, uh, the best way to do this. So if I take a look, I can see that there's a shadow on this edge and it kind of, the shadow kind of tends to fade as it goes to the right. So I don't want to cut this part off because I'm going to have to have to worry about that shadow. So I'm actually going to cut from this side. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use my select option and I'm going to get close to the edge of that texture and I'm going to left click once and I'm just going to bring my mouse all the way across. So I'm now created the texture of where I want to cut. And I'm just going to, again, just kind of adjust it just a little bit. So I get the exact piece that I want. So again, we're just going to go one more time from the pier and then down. And now everything is uh, selected. I'm now just going to go up here and I'm just going to say crop. When I click crop, everything outside of that selection is now removed. So now I'm seeing just this texture and I can see the batten board, batten board, batten board. And if I was to copy this texture going all the way across, it would now put this batten over here and it would repeat all the way across. That would create a seamless texture for us. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go up and I'm just gonna go and say save. I just wanna save that. It's now saved that BNB blue.jpg to my desktop. Now that everything is saved, I can close down paint. I'm going to take a copy of this and I'm going to paste it into my program data so that I can save this to the CAD soft division 16 textures. And I'm just going to paste this into there. And it's now put that new board and batten material into the textures folder for me. Now I'm just gonna close that all down and we're gonna go into Envisioneer. So now in Envisioneer, we're gonna be looking at adjusting the materials properties. So once you have edited the texture file and saved it to your textures folder, you can now create a new texture within Envisioneer. In Envisioneer, you will be able to give the material a name and adjust the properties to reflect how it should be rendered. Adjusting these variables will help in achieving a more photorealistic material. So in Envisioneer, we're gonna select File, Catalogs, and then we're gonna to go to Library Manager, and under the library manager, we're going to select libraries and then materials. This will just take a second to load here. So now that we're in the library manager, the, we're going to go to libraries and then we're going to go to materials. Now under materials, we're going to be able to select exactly where we want to save this texture to. And in this case, I want to go all the way down and find wood panels and when I select wood panels it'll show me all of the available wood panels currently available in Envisioneer and I can scroll through that list and I can see all the different wood panels. I want to add my new texture here that way I know exactly where it is and I'm going to be able to easily find it um, in my catalog. So I'm going to select the last option in the list I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add material. Once I say add material, I now want to make sure I give it a unique name. Again, this is important because we want to make sure that the naming convention for this material is something that I'm going to be very easily able to recognize and find in my catalog. And it's going to give a good description of what the material is. So in this case, I'm just going to go board and batten blue. And then over here, underneath our properties, we want to adjust a couple of different options here. So 
Under the diffuse area, we want to make sure that we are selecting a texture. We don't want it to be just a color. We want to use that texture that we found. So under texture, I'm just going to click on the little swatch and it will bring up the texture mapping option and allow me to select a texture to use. So here we're going to say, instead of using this wood panel decking, I'm going to say select. And it's now going to bring me to the option of selecting where that material is going to be stored. And in this case, again, we want to go to uh, this PC. We're going to go to our C drive and we're going to go to program data. CAD soft Envisioner 16 textures. And then I'm just going to type in blue and it should then show me the blue board and batten. I'm oh, sorry, board and batten blue, sorry. B and B blue. And then we're going to say open. And that will now apply that texture to our, um, in our swatch area. The next thing it's going to show us is the um, tile height and the tile width. So in here, we assume that we want to make sure that the tile height and the tile width are constrained. So if I adjust the height, it's also going to adjust the width for me. You can keep it that way if you want to. Um, for this texture here, I want to make sure that it is a set size, though. So I'm going to assume that the batten is going to be, I'm going to go and say round it up to two inches. I'm going to go six inches. So we're going to go two and six is going to be eight. So we're going to have eight. We're going to have 16 and then we're going to have 24. So I want to make sure that the width is 24. So that's perfect. But I may want the height to be a little bit taller. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to unselect this lock and I want to change the height, just the height, and we're going to say eight feet. This will make the height of the tile of the texture we're using eight feet, but it's going to keep it at a two foot uh, width. You can make that even taller if you want to. So if you know you're gonna be working with taller walls, you can say, I want that texture to be uh, 10 feet high by two feet. Again, that's just mapping that texture to a set size. You would really only need to do this for textures that you know have a, a size that you need to use. As an example, brick would be another one where I would have a set size. Tile would be another one where I have a set size to it. Um, again, anything that has an actual scalable size to it, you want to make sure you apply that uh, in here at the texture level. Once we have all of that specified, there is an option in here that uh, we can see that says make magenta color transparent. We want to make sure that that is unchecked for right now. I'm going to touch on the magenta color in a little bit. Uh, but for right now, we don't need to worry about that. We're just going to leave that as it is. And the next thing we see is texture intensity. Now, this controls the brightness and the contrast of the texture um, in the scene. So values are going to range from uh, 0 0.00 um, all the way up to uh, point. Uh, sorry, two point, uh, up to two. So from here, we're going to adjust that intensity and I'm going to keep mine at that point eight. Again, this is just going to be the, how that texture's color is going to affect the scene itself. If I find that the blue is overpowering and it's casting a blue like tinge to everything around it, I would come in here and adjust it. 0.8 is the default and it's usually pretty good. Um, an example of needing to change that would be with your grass. You, when you look at the grass texture and you get into the texture intensity, you will notice that it is probably down to like a 0.6 or 0.4. Um, if you're noticing that the grass is casting a green, shot, a green hue on everything around it, you would want to adjust that uh, texture intensity. But again, 0.8 is typically the default um, so we usually leave it there. And then as you render, if you notice it, you can adjust it. And we're going to say OK to that. Once that is selected, the next thing we're going to see is a bump option. 
Now, depending on if you're going to be adding in a bump map to this, you can apply a, uh, a texture for your bump mapping. Now, if you're going to be adding in a texture that has raised, raised edges or wrinkles, you may want to take advantage of the bump feature. This will give the texture the appearance of depth when it is rendered. You can have a couple of different ways of adding in a bump texture to the material itself. If the material you have found also create also had a um, what we call a normal map, you can also include that in the texture. If not, what you can do is you can take the exact same texture. And we're just going to go up here. We're going to say again. We're going to grab that uh, B and B blue. And we're going to say open. And you want to make sure that the sizing is the exact same. So we want to make sure that it is, again, going to be constrained. We want the height to be 10 feet. And we're going to go 2 feet. Since we're using this as just an actual image file, it's not a normal image, we're going to keep the type set to standard. If I was using a normal image or a normal map that came with the texture from wherever I got it from, I would change this to use the normal map. A normal map is essentially just a negative of the texture that you're working with. Um, I'll show you an example of that in just a moment, but for right now, we're going to keep ours set to standard. Once we have that set up, again, we're going to keep that texture intensity at 0.8. We're going to say OK. Now I can control the bump scale. If I'm using a normal map, the bump scale is not going to be an option because the image itself will create the depth to the image. But right now, we need to add in our bump scale. And I'm going to bump this up to point or 3.0. Again, this is a trial. You would see it, render it, see how it looks. If it's not giving you the, de the depth that you want, you can come back in and adjust the bump scale. Next is emissive. Now, under emissive, this option allows you to control how much light the texture is going to give off. Typically, you would have this set to zero. Opacity will control how transparent the texture is. Again, for us, we want this to be completely opaque. We don't want to see through our siding at all. So we want to make sure that that is completely opaque. We also want to make sure that it has a dull finish. You can adjust that if you want to. So if you want to have a bit of a sheen to it, you can apply a bit of a glossy sheen on it. Uh, but for us, we're going to keep that set to dull. The specular option controls how shiny a texture is going to be. And again, you can adjust just how shiny it is by using the slider. Again, I'm going to keep this all set to a very dull color, so I don't want it to be shiny. So I'm going to keep that at 0%. And then the reflection option will allow you to control how reflective the object is. And once you start to apply a reflection, you can again adjust the sharpness or the blur of that reflection. Underneath all of that, you're going to see a section called IOR. Now, IOR is the index of refraction. And this describes the way light bends when crossing the material surface. So a value of 1 means that the light will not change direction. Selecting a material from the drop box, when you use the drop down box from here, you can select one of the predefined elements uh, from there. And each of those would have their own index of refraction value. You can also select custom and go up on the internet and type in index of refraction uh, for whatever you're looking for, and it will give you a value that you can type in. Again, we're not going to change ours, we're going to keep it set to air. And then underneath that, we have a Fresnel checkbox. When this is enabled, the reflection strength becomes dependent on the viewing angle of the surface you're looking at. Some materials in nature, like glass, reflect light in this manner. Just note that the Fresnel effect depends on the index of refraction as well. We're now going to click on the Information tab. And under the information tab, we want to make sure we set the material usage to the correct usage. 
So we're working with a wood wall, so wood material. So I wanna make sure that the material usage is set to wood. This is just gonna help sort this uh, in the catalog. So when I'm trying to find something, I can find it very easily because it's gonna be in the correct usage area. And then I'm just gonna click on okay. And that's now added in that new board and bat in blue to our catalog. Now, a couple of things. First off, the um, magenta color that we were talking about. So I'm gonna scroll up to uh, doors as an example. So here we have decorative doors and we have a wood door from ODL. And I'm just gonna double click on that. And we're gonna see a bunch of different doors in here. If I scroll right to the bottom, we're gonna have a couple of doors at the bottom that look a little bit different. When I double click on that, it's going to bring up the properties of that door. Now, when I look at the texture, I'm seeing a pink or magenta color in that texture. So when I click on this, this file was created to use a door, but I want that door to be glass. So I wanna see right through that area. To do that in Envisioneer, the file, first of all, has to be saved as a bitmap. And second of all, we need to map out the transparent area with a magenta color. And that magenta color has an RGB value of 255.0.255. I then map out the area that I want to make that color. And I make sure that I have the make magenta color transparent. That way when it comes into Envisioneer, it recognizes that color code of magenta and it says, oh, that's a magenta color. It needs to be transparent. So when I put that door into my design, it's gonna see right through that magenta color. So again, in paint, you would do something like this. So if I go into paint and I want to create a shape as an example, I would create a box and then I would go in and I would fill that area in. So if I create another box inside and I want that to be transparent, I would go in and I would use my materials paint or my paint bucket here. And I would go in and say, I want to edit the color that I'm gonna bring in. And I have an RGB, red, green, blue. That would be 255, zero, 255, say okay. And then I would just drop in that material right in the middle of where I want to be transparent. The rest of this is gonna be a wood color. I'm just gonna make sure that that is wood. I would bring that texture in and then it would show me that section. I would see the wood door and then I would see through that magenta color. And that's what we're basically seeing here. Again, everything else is the same. We're mapping it the same way. We're gonna give it the same um, uh, options that we would normally have. It's just that color being magenta and this checkbox will apply to make sure we see through it. The other section that I talked about was normal maps. And the best way to describe a normal map is taking a look at a uh, generic wall tile as an example. So in here, we have a couple of different wall tiles. And these wall tiles, uh, as an example, have some geometric shape to them. So if I take a look at this 3D wall tile here, it's got like the, uh, the grooves in it. So if I double click on that texture, here I can see that I have the texture. And then as attached to that texture, I have a normal map. It might be really hard to see here, so I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to try and find it in here. And we're going to go through here. It's called 3D wall tile uh, gouged. So we're going to go in and say, uh, sorry, wrong button there. We're going to go through here. We're going to go 3D wall tile uh, gouged. So right here. Again, it's going to be hard to see. So I'm going to open this in paint so you can see it. I'm going to go open with paint. So this is, again, a negative image of the texture itself. So by bringing this into Envisioneer with the texture, it's seeing these areas and it's going to say, 
Uh, these areas are going to be lower, the brighter areas are going to be higher, so it's going to create that bump look to it. So in Envisioneer, all we're essentially doing is just applying that to the texture as a normal map. And again, it's going to be the exact same size. So we're working with one tile here, so it's eight inches by eight inches, and it's going to be applied to that texture. And it will help give that texture some depth. That is a normal map. Again, that's something that you probably can't create yourself. So if you're finding textures online, uh, depending on where you're getting them from, some textures will have a normal map option. So if you do have that, take advantage of it and you can use that uh, normal map. So now that we've added in our texture, we've gone through how everything is going to look, we can now apply our texture to our actual walls. So I'm going to go up and I'm just going to say OK. And that's going to save the catalog for me. So all the work that I've just done is now saved. I'm going to have that new board and bat and blue option saved to the catalog. And now I just need to apply it to my walls. So we're going to let that save. And now I'm going to go up and I'm going to select my materials paintbrush. So in a 3D view, if I'm in 2D, you will notice that the material paintbrush option is disabled. I can't actually use that until I'm in a 3D view. So I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to select my 3D camera button and I'm going to grab 3D perspective. Now I can see the material paintbrush. I'm going to click on it. And the catalog is now going to populate with all the different materials that I can use for my design. And we're going to go and scroll down to wood panels. That's where we saved our blue board and batten. And I'm just going to go down and I'm going to select it. So now I can see the blue board and batten texture is now selected. But I want all of my walls to use this same texture. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to select apply to all similar. By doing this, it's going to say for every wall that is the same as the wall that is selected, it's going to apply this texture to it for me automatically. So now all I have to do is left click once and it now applies that texture to all of my walls. Now the walls in my drawing had a material assigned to it. So if I go into properties, so I'm just going to finish that and I'm going to say select all similar right click properties and when I go to the appearance tab and I'm looking at the appearance and I go to mapping I can see here that it is set to auto map because again I have it already set up the way that I want the override tile size is disabled it's using the tile size that the image is using which is what we want but the rotation has been changed so I want to make sure that that is set to zero say okay and then OK. And I can now see that new texture is now applied. You're also going to notice that I am seeing a bit of a difference in the bottom of that trim or the bottom of that material. So all I need to do here is again select all similar, right click properties. And you can do a couple of things here. We can go into the actual appearance. And on the exterior surface, we can adjust the mapping. Over here, we have a position option. And when I click on that, we can see by pressing up and down, it's going to move that texture up and down. And you're gonna essentially just click on that a couple of times, say okay and okay. And you can now see it's moved that texture down. We do need to go one more click. So again, select all similar, right click properties, under appearance, under mapping, click down one more time, and now it's moved that texture down, and I'm now not seeing that issue of the tile repeating in the wrong spot. I could also just go in and say select all similar, right click properties, and I can go into appearance, mapping, and I can go in and adjust it and manually override it. So we set it to be two feet wide by 10 feet tall. I can go in and say, well, 
instead of trying to figure out the position here, I'm just going to make it 11 feet tall and it will adjust it that way too. I typically adjust it using the position option, but there are a couple of ways that you can adjust that. And now all we have to do is take a look at our drawing and we can apply different materials to the different elements. And now we can just simply zoom in and go to view, render 3D real view. And we can now see how that's going to look. And even in this view, I'm gonna change the view just a little bit so we get a um, side view. Let's get something like that. And then we can go in and say render. And this is where using that bump mapping, you're gonna see that in the actual texture here because you'll see the little raises in the material uh, because we use that as a bump map texture. And again, the higher the quality, the more realistic the rendering is going to look. So this was just a basic uh, quick rendering. Um, and you can see how that quickly that went through. So if I go reset, options let's bump up the quality to level three and we'll say apply and then okay and render and this one will take a little bit longer but you'll get a little bit better of a rendering um, as you create it so that essentially covers everything that i wanted to talk about in today's class about creating custom materials so i'm just going to go over a quick review if you happen to have any questions about what we covered please feel free to go ahead and type those in. So in today's class, we now have learned how to add in custom materials into our catalog. We've learned how to source the material that you can use from the internet, again, using either the manufacturer or just doing a general search online. We also learned how you can take the image and adjust it using the uh, photo editing applications that are available to us. And then in Envisioneer, we learned how to adjust the properties of the texture to achieve a more photorealistic quality when assigned to our elements. So again, I'm just going to pause here for just a moment to see if there are any questions about what we've covered today. And again, you can see here it's starting to show a little bit more depth in our design. And I'm just going to click close. And again, I'm just going to open up that question section and see if anybody has any questions. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the class, I will be sending out an email that contains the document that we were referring to in today's class. And if you happen to have any questions while trying this out on your own, again, please don't hesitate. Give our support department a call. They'll be happy to help you out with any questions. Perfect. Well, there doesn't appear to be any questions today, so I do want to thank everybody for attending. I do look forward to speaking with you all again very soon. Thank you very much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day.